So that's right, I was trying to figure out what's next for me. I didn't have anything set yet when I was doing roles. Um, dziękuję, so I ended up at Fnatic. It was one of the offers I had. Um, the one I really wanted. Yeah, I just dropped everything else. I really wanted to play for them again. Fast forward. Winter split. It was tough. We were losing against everyone. To be honest, there wasn't any team that we were really beating or even the games we would win. It would feel more like we were like lucky to win or and we would throw or yeah, we were not doing well. I think that's the, the big thing I want to emphasize here. Like practice was <clears throat> our level of play was really bad and we were not getting anywhere. Like it didn't feel as, we, as if we were improving. So with us having like almost no time, having a low level of play and not improving, when we came into the split, I think what you saw is um, what we had to offer. Like, if I think to the stage games and then I compare it to practice, it's not a situation of we were good in scrims and bad on stage because I know some teams have that. Um, we were just bad, I think. Yeah, stage scrims, everything was just bad. So, uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was embarrassing to play to be honest, because low level of play, not getting anywhere in scrims, like the, we were unable to fix anything really. Between the first game and the last game of winter, we had mm, we had six days of practice, I think. So we played our first game January 21, I think. And we played our last game February 6th. I don't know if I'm right or wrong here. Um, and in between the game days, so in between the 21st and the 6th, there were a total of six practice days. So yeah, we weren't able to fix anything. Like it was... <clears throat> I emphasize, I didn't uh, have a chance with videos to talk about the format, but the format, all of the practice needs to happen before. It needs to happen before. All of the practice that, bef it needs to happen before the B1s. You cannot, you cannot get away with trying to fix things mid-season. You can't, especially because new patches aren't coming in. You have to start early. You have to start very early because Reckless is right. When the season starts and you're playing your first match, you in total, over the regular season, you get six practice days, realistically. Right? It was tough. Uh, it was tough from start to finish. And sure, we could have maybe made like fifth or sixth because we did have at least two more wins, probably, or we uh, should have had at least two more wins. So maybe with a four five record, we're going to best of threes. If we uh, smurf one best of three, I don't know, finish fifth, sixth. I think it wasn't impossible, even with how things were going. But um, yeah, we threw a couple of games on stage and then ended up to seven, not even making best of three. So I guess the feeling after was really bad for everyone involved, all of the fans, all of us working. But during as well, at least to me, it didn't come as a surprise. It probably did for you guys that uh, things were this way. But yeah, I think it was there the entire time. Like the struggles were there the entire time. It wasn't us playing bad on stage. It wasn't us. Yeah, it was there the entire time, I think, so. For sure, the feeling was worse after because we because we finished ninth, but I think at best we could probably have done fifth, sixth here, and um, that's not, at least to me, it's not uh, enough. Like, if I finish ninth or fifth, sixth, it feels like it's a failure either way, so. Um, I feel like it's, yeah, it would, like, let's say we finished fifth, sixth, right? Let's say we actually got those two more wins and smart for the best of three. I would still feel really fucking shit about this split, to be honest, so. For sure, something had to change, right? Because Fnatic should not be a team that is 56th. It should be a team level, to be honest. Our level was too low and our practice was not getting us anywhere. So for sure, changes had to be made. Um, is there anything specific I should address more in winter? I guess maybe this is a good time for you guys to maybe I can take some questions. Maybe if you have any like specific questions to what I've said so far. Like, yeah, whatever other offer I had, I just wanted to be on Fnatic. Yeah, we had a pretty good uh, relationship outside of the game between everyone, even me and Rox. It was just that we were losing every game, so at some point, I think everyone just kind of started panicking a little bit because, like, we came into the year. There's expectations on how everything's gonna go. I'm pretty sure all of us expected to be way, way better than we were from the get-go, and I'm pretty sure all of us expected more from the time together, like getting better, improving on stuff. And neither was really happening. So, um, yeah, from all the losing, I think that's when everyone started panicking because it just didn't feel uh, it didn't feel like a place we should be in. And I think for, uh, for specifically me and Rocks, it got worse and worse. We started the year playing everything. Like actually we played every combo, we played everything and really tried. And then with time, we started dropping more and more. Um, what to play, we started dropping more and more, uh, contesting the lanes. Like we 
just couldn't make anything work. We'd lose both sides of multiple matchups. Like if we played Lucianami against Katelyn Lux, we'd lose the Lucianami side. Then we'd go next game, we'd play Katelyn Lux against Lucianami, we'd lose the Katelyn Lux side. So I think with time, we just dropped a lot of things and tried to find what could potentially work for us. Obviously, you don't have a lot of good options if you are just getting outplayed. Sometimes it's honestly as simple as that. I think if your level of play is worse, then there's not really much you can do. Like we, we tried to find answers on how we could um, get away with being so much worse. But uh, yeah, I don't think we were able to find anything that uh, could fit the meta because the meta was really like bot lane meta. Uh, a lot of OP picks, a lot of um, a lot of games being all about like how bot lane goes, empowering raid carry, and that was what, that was what wasn't working for us. We had to go on the other side of the spectrum, try to get some some kind of support that could roam, try to get a self sufficient AD, and it was just really hard to make work. Yeah. I appreciate it super much, you know, it's like he's he's sharing his side of the story, right? And he is not throwing anyone under the bus, right? I, I think that's I, I appreciate that fact, you know? It's like he, 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 he takes ownership for for it, right? I think that's important. Uh, as I said, just not a lot of good options when you were when you're losing like both sides of matchups and uh just getting updated. So um, I'm not like I'm not surprised we were getting fucked. Um, I just think it would have happened regardless of what we played. Like it was a decision we made off of what was happening in practice and the feeling of the team. Like how we were actually winning games and how we were feeling good when we were playing. It really wasn't when we were playing for both. It was way more when we were. Um, um, Important, yeah. But is it useful? Well, I'm I'm sure he feels better doing this, right? And. It's like, on the topic of, topic of Thorin, right? It's like, Thorin... Thorin is very good because you can tell him things and he will hold that information and he will... Like, Thorin knows a lot more than he says. And... Um, that's all I can say, right? Important, yeah, but is it useful? Uh, like, um, useful, not useful. Like, I'm sure fans are enjoying to, to hear him uh, talk about it, right? And... Um, Being rocks on his engaged sports, uh, trying to play in the jungle, uh, trying to get me Varus so I could um, kind of cheat the whole thing. Like, Varus was one of the few champs, maybe the only champ that could really cheat this system because I could win my lanes. Uh, I was actually a strong champ, a good champ on the patch. I engage, so we could play like a bit more crazy or try to play a bit more crazy than we would be able to with a uh, farming AD carry. So, Varus was something that maybe the only thing that really worked for us. We had pretty good success with Saya. I think the mistake we did with Saya was that we drafted it early and Saya is a cooking champ. Basically, what I mean with that is it works well in some games, really well in some games, and in some games it's fucking bad. And I picked it early in the last game, which was bad. I should have picked it late. Saya should have been my cooking champ. Sort of like Silver is my cooking champ. If I see a good situation for Silver later in draft, I can really make a difference in the game. Cooking I think champ. <clears throat> criteria for that, so my mistake was picking it early. Pizza not playing it, I think, more picking it early, because it was one of the few champs we actually had success with. The fucking word cooking like, has won, lost the plot, I'm telling you that much. Which kind of <laughs> went hand in hand with winning, uh, since we're losing every game. Um, most when we were playing Varus, when we were playing Saya. I think we had decent success with Ezreal as well. With I have to say, guys, it's like, I have been saying, what you're cooking for the last five years, and that's ruined. It's like, every time I write someone, what you're cooking, it's like, I feel... Like a numbskull. It's been completely ruined. I've, I've said what you're cooking to my players for the last five years. Severe. Um, we weren't able to execute on any of the combos because we're just losing both sides of matchups. So Yeah, the issue with, with Ezreal, Severe, both of them are kind of reliant on Karma as a champion, right? Let's say you put... Yeah, the Lucianami example versus Kenten Lux, we lose both. Let's say you put Seri Lulu, Seri Yumi, Seri Lulu, Seri Yumi. Like, one thing gets two, another thing gets two. We lose both sides of those as well, so... We really didn't want to end up there because we didn't, but well, we weren't winning games. We didn't feel like that could win us games. We wanted to end up in a scenario where it's a lot more about like mid jungle, running around on the map with support. No, Sivir and Ezreal definitely have a place in the meta, right? There's games where it's picked and it's really good. G2 played it, Koi played it, T1 played it. You know, Ezreal is also picked with Ezreal Karma, right? It's, but it's it's very, you need to be able to play both sides of, of super matchups. You can't, you can't play like Ezreal Nautilus. That's most of the time just too trash. It was just hard to force on the patch, yeah. Sorry for like the- Heimadonga, though. Yeah, Heimadonga is another one, right? Um, Brain support. Yeah, I'm gonna scroll down and go through a few more questions. And then we can talk off, um, after this. <laughs>
Uh, the key thing, right, what people are missing when, when we talk about playing enchanters, it's not about, like, playing the champion and using the spells is really easy. But a lot of the matchups require a lot of pre precision. You trade down to 1 HP, and each spell that you throw is very important. Your basic attacks, how you move, how you prevent ganks. Like, you make one mistake and you lose the whole lane, right? We saw that with Vitality too, right? It's like... They were playing Caitlyn Lux, and then Lux walks up, ease, goes too far, and and basically the knowledge about these range matchups is so steep and deep that it's like you need to. It's, it's like the lane micro is really, really intense. It's insanely intense. It's about this off season or this period after the winter split. Is there synergy problems? Or maybe atmosphere in the team? Mm, I don't think so. I think. Um... I think our level of play was just really bad. And our practice was... I think I think this idea of synergy, right, I think is completely twisted in the community. Um, synergy is more important outside of the game than it is inside of the game. Um, synergy, it's, it's more about knowing how to communicate with your teammates outside of the game. This is essential. That is where you can find and build synergy. Um, when it comes to in-game things, it's like T1, they have a level of trust. G2 has a level of trust towards one another that people are going to execute mechanically. And people are emboldened to, to take decisions for the team because they know that they will have the back of, of everyone and at the same time they will execute mechanically. Is that synergy? Well, to some degree, but it's more about players being really, really good and and trusting each other's mechanical ability. And the conversations that occur outside of the game and how you how you basically increase it's like if if a player has a certain level of game knowledge, right? How this person increases the knowledge ceiling of the team to reach his ceiling is where the synergy needs to lie, right? Even worse, I would say. Um, we were not improving on anything. It really just felt like <clears throat> we were not improving on anything. We came in with a really low level of play, and because then we're losing every game, and we're not improving on anything, confidence goes to absolute shit. So... A lot of random mistakes start happening on stage where we are feeling so anxious inside to like to get the wins on the board and to impact the game. I think from an individual point of view, people are feeling really anxious about impacting the game, so they start going for plays they normally wouldn't. I think Rasork was the victim of this. Especially Rasork was the victim victim of this because he he was flipping like way more than um, than he would normally do. I think whereas this from us on the begin beginning he was flipping way more towards the end. Mm -hmm. And I think that came from this feeling that uh, nothing is working, confidence is low. Need to like uh, completely turbo smurf one nine uh, this and yeah start making random shit and it's um just making yeah, it worse. Yeah. But, uh, I, I could also see this from an outside. I never felt like any of my teammates were coming from a bad place with how they were playing or behaving or doing things. I, I think everyone was actually trying to win and we just yeah we were we were just bad and we were not improving. And every other every other team was uh improving. I would say most of the teams maybe Excel were in a similar spot to us. Mm, where they came in with a low level of play and didn't seem like they improved on anything, but. Like heretics looked like they were improving. They were kind of bad in the beginning, got better and better. SK as well, and we just weren't able to do that. I think if we, like, let's say we come in with a low level of play, <clears throat> then um, if the practice is really good and we're improving on on stuff day to day, it's not the end of the world that we're bad in the beginning. As you can see with teams, like if they go, like Koi for example, they had a really bad start. They started, but did they have a really bad start? Yeah, they did. They well, they had two one, one two one first week, but then and they went on the big streak. There have been teams that start really bad and get better and better because their practice is improving them, and I don't think we had that going for us. So, I guess two issues. Low level of play. I don't know if I'm being clear with this. Maybe there's a bad wording, but basically what I mean with low level of play is um, we don't have, like... We, we can't just win games from clicking our mouse. <laughs> that sounds so weird to say, but... Uh, our players were not twice as good as enemy player, so we actually needed to play good. You know? Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. I don't mean that we were boosted, boosted, but I, I think our level of play was quite low, individually. Um, so then we really needed the other part. We really needed to be getting better as a team, do things well uh, on the map, not, yeah, not uh, 
be stuck in the same place for the entire space. Like we really need to get somewhere and we were not getting anywhere. That's basically what I mean. <clears throat> so I'm scrolling down. I probably missed a bunch of questions now that I'm talking forever and ever. But I think it's good to talk about anyway. There's, um, there's been uh, such a long time since I streamed, so there's so much to talk about. <laughs> what do you think you can personally change? Or is it purely a team issue? I mean, it's both, right? For sure I can do more and for sure the team can do more. For me, the most important thing would be that the practice improves. Actually, what is most important for me? Level of play or practice? No, I think practice, yeah. So I can handle if um, level of play is low, because if the practice is good, it will come with time. I know now there's not a lot of time, so it hurts more with this format than before if the play level of play is low. But um, we need to just, yeah, <laughs> we need to have better scrims. We need people to play more League of Legends. We just need the improvement to be there, even if the level is how much time is there left until Spring Split? Is it enough for teams to improve or change? Well, I think in the context of some of the teams that were left out early, like Excel and uh, Fnatic, they definitely have a lot of time to, to improve and to practice on new patches. Uh, G2 won't have a lot of time. Mad Lions won't have a lot of, uh, a lot of time, right? And... Um, the, the teams that we went further ha just have less time, right? That's it. It's low, we just need improvement to be there. This is most important for me. Um, so what can I personally change? I think um, just being able to play everything is what I, I'm i hoping to change for next bit. I was in this mindset coming into the air that I was going to play everything and then we started dropping a lot of stuff, so... By the way, Wunder was not the person who played the least amount of solo queue in Fnatic in winter obviously i'm biased i need to protect my boy wonder but look it up do you think synergy in game is overrated no it's it's like it, synergy is just an overused word Didn't really go hand in hand, but that's great. <clears throat> there's never been a moment in my career where I have spammed Raven. With every other carry, I've had a moment in my career where I've played them professionally, so there's been a period where I just played them like, hey, trying to change, playing everything. Yeah. But that's not as simple as like, uh, can I pilot the champion or not? First of all, um, we need, to, well, I guess that's step one, but I think it's not just that, you know, it's way more. It's about playing, uh, playing stuff together with your partner. It's about being able to empower it together with your team. Like it's more than me just piloting the champion. Basically. But that would be my personal goal to reach a point where important thing that practice is improved. So we can actually work on things. We can get better and we can fix stuff. Like add stuff instead of take away stuff. Because um, yeah, we were just not getting anywhere. Uh, we're happy with the level of play we showed. But I think it's uh it's like a bigger issue than am I good or not individually. Does that make sense? Peace. <laughs> where practice is good, everyone's happy, confidence is high, then for sure I'm good enough. There's uh, absolutely no reason for me not to be good enough. Necessarily, like, doomed forever and ever. Even though I know that's what people are really hoping. <laughs> I really don't think that's the case for any of the players in the team. I think it's... Uh, it's about uh, way more than... Way more than that. Can I realize more on lack of team practice or more about the roster? Um, I think the roster was dysfunctional. For sure. Um, so that's an issue. I think us five players together were not meant to play together. <laughs> so that's issue one, I think. And issue two, I would say, is that... Uh... Yeah, there's some of that Jizuki, but there's also like a minimum, right? It's like, if, if you're lacking, if you're lacking in some kind of department, you're not going to hold your team down because you're afraid of burning out. That is when you have to spend some of your juice to catch up. Like Jizu, if 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 I if I was in a position where I would have any deficit towards my team, then I'm burning gas. And in my experience, maybe maybe it's only me, but there has never been a season where I'm not burnt out after. Like I, I like every season I am three weeks, four weeks, I'm just useless. I'm just a fucking corpse, dude. All I do is sleep, I barely eat, I don't do anything. Yeah, 2018? Yeah, 2018, Jizuki, you're a psychopath because you 
Right afterwards, you stayed in Korea to boot camp. Right? It's like you stayed in Korea to boot camp and you barely took a break, right? And now, and now, th after that, you, you realize how to space things out more, right? You adopted the Cabo Shard strategy. It's like, imagine Jizuke, we, 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 we lost, we, we, you know, I'm talking to Jizuke, I'm like, Jizuke, you should take some time off. He's like, no, I'm going to bootcamp in Korea. I'm like, I'm like, why? He says, when we screamed rookie, I, he, he told me when, um, uh, he said, if we play on stage against Rookie, I don't feel like I can be better than him right now. So I have to practice. That's what he told me. And then he just stayed in Korea. And played uh, 30 solo queue games a day. <laughs> there was no other player that did that to Jizuke. <laughs> so, respect to Jizuke and respect to Rookie. <laughs> um, yeah, this game's not going good. Not in terms of result. It's like... When Jizuke came back in 2018, it's like, when we were scrimming 2019 in spring, mechanically, Jizuke was so insanely good. It was crazy. But my mind was burnt out. <laughs> uh, Jizuke, you, you were so burnt out, but mechanically, you were insane. But like in terms of improvement, we're just not getting anywhere. Changes have to be made. Everyone is bad now and forever bad. Like, there's a really good chance I think next split, all of a sudden things are good. So, um, clear, didn't, um, work well together. But again, with, even with all of that, right, even with individual play low, even with maybe this roster, um, being dysfunctional. I think it was the other way, Jizuke. Um, at least I understood that you got sick because, like, basically you got sick and it, because of the burnout, right? That's at least how I remember it and understood it, but of course you know better, Jizu. If our practice was good, we we're working on things... Um, Fuck man, I was so worried about you back then, Jizu. We could have still uh, made it work, you know? So, uh, I, th I think it's important to stay optimistic and not like... Um, yeah, I think it's a forever kind of thing. There's how good people actually are. I uh, as people would like to believe it. Like, I, I don't think it's as simple as... There's just so many things going into it. Um, and so many things that have to change now for spring, so... I guess I'm just... Uh, I'm glad that I get to be a part of everything. Yeah. <laughs> because if we can actually make all of these changes, I think we can turn it around. Mona Malona, thank you very much for the subscription. Appreciate it. I kind of uh, spun out of control. <laughs> There's just way, way too many questions. I'm gonna try to TLDR the art a little bit now, get back on track. I feel like it. I kind of uh, spun out of control. <laughs> so, what did we talk about? We talked a little bit about the off-season. I don't think there was too much to cover there. It was really simple for me. Basically, that's simple, yeah. Um, stream, I think. So maybe some of you know what I mean. Um, but um, Cake Corp were nice enough to drop 50% of the buyout, and I paid the other 50% myself. So. Um, yeah, we we figured it out. <laughs> I think otherwise it was simple, yeah. Wanted to go to Fnatic if I got the offer and I did so. Ended up here. And then winter, yeah, we're touching on a lot of stuff now. But what sentiment do I want you to leave with from all of this? I think what I want you to leave with... It's crazy that uh, he paid his own buyout, man. Shit. That's crazy. Is that... But I also understand with how the market was, right? That, um... With um, uh, K-Cop dropping 50% of it and he paying 50% of it, right? It's a uh, damn fanatic uh, got a bargain. All things considered, right? It's like all things considered. Reckless in terms of branding, what you get when you sign him on the team. I think that uh, it's like you, you, you probably... It, it's like... You probably just get your money back, no? You probably just get your money back. Be nice to the guys. <laughs> I think that's the sentiment I wanted to leave it because it's not. It wasn't. Um, 
it wasn't so easy to fix anything. And I really feel like uh, everyone had a hard time. Just getting through the days, feeling panicked and stressed and anxious. There's no way his bio was 1 million, by the way. No way. No way his bio was 1 million. No way. For everything that was happening, losing confidence. Yeah, I think it was a really tough time for all of us. So uh, we're trying to fix everything now. It's a lot of stuff to fix. Um, we need better level of play. We need to improve our practice. We need uh, people to try harder individually. Like, there's just a lot that needs to be fixed. Um, but we're trying. We're trying to fix it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I think. I really think there's a good chance we do a much better job in spring. I think Chinese players, you guys, and, uh, if we start talking shit, about Chinese players, we but, uh, we are in a different dimension, by the way. Tough times for all of the guys. Mm. Give me one second. We talked a little bit in detail about <clears throat> like when, well, like why we ended up playing champions, we ended up playing on both. I feel like I covered that part, so I don't, like we were trying. We were really trying to play everything because that was the only time we would find wins and we were really, really trying to where we ended up. Like I really regret, for example, picking Cyberline because I think it was a cooking champ. Like if it's a cooking champ, you just up the there behind. I think there's no- Back to the to cooking. And this uh, fresh start, the right thing, everyone's- After winter, obviously there was a lot of uncertainty in the team because uh, everyone was worried for- It's understandable that people were worried for their spot on the team. I was really worried for my spot on the team too. Um, I think it's normal, I mean, the goal here is to win, um, whatever that means. There is, um, there's just this one goal in mind, right, to win. So, uh, Fnatic weren't looking to try to fix this because the goal is to win, and we are as far away. From what is it? From winning as possible. So, um, I think it's good that they are making changes. Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, it, it, it's a must. There is just another way. So. Yeah, a lot of worry for what was to come next. Uh, I think for the past, like, or for the, for the, so it's two weeks ago that we lost yesterday, three weeks. Yeah. Um, for the first two weeks of that period, um, I didn't know much. I gave my feedback on what I think we could do different for next split, which changes I would like to see, what I could do better, what I didn't do so good, just like a complete offload of everything. And if I'm not mistaken, all of the players did that. I think all of the staff people did that as well, so they gathered yeah, as much as uh, as much information as possible, and then off of that information they made decisions on uh, what needs to happen in the team for us to be successful, having the goal of winning in mind. And then uh, after those first two weeks or so, uh, this is decisions were uh, being made, and we got info on what's happening, and we started practicing again, and now we are prepping for the winter split. Yeah, so. Um, it was a weird period, to be honest, because I was off, or well, um, how would you say? I was playing League, but I wasn't screaming. I didn't know if I had a spot on the team. A lot of uncertainty and a lot of stress and days where you think to yourself, it's over. Um, yeah, this is this is my career over. A lot of days where you think to yourself, um, the complete opposite. It's not over at all. <laughs> We're gonna turn this shit around, fix everything, do everything. So um, weird period, to be honest. I, I didn't really feel like I could relax much. I was. I was worried, yeah. I was worried for what was to come next, but uh, I'm lucky enough to have one more chance, so I will do everything I can to take this chance. Um, I think the only thing for me that made me kind of sad... I'm not sure if sad is right here. Hmm. What word do I use for this? It was a feeling of like... Uh, uh, I don't know. I think it's a good word for this. I was kind of sad, but also like a little bit angry. Or was I angry? No, I think I was mostly sad, yeah. No, I think I was, yeah, sad is probably the best way I can describe it. Actually, maybe empty, more like an empty feeling. Yeah, so basically what I heard was that uh, they were talking with Upset to come back and play. I think that is, uh, that is normal. Like honestly, the part that they spoke to him or the fact that that is considered doesn't surprise me. Upset is fucking good. And it is so weird, actually, that he is in this situation. I've been in this situation myself, so um, I know how weird, how weird it is. And with this level of play, it's just like extra weird, <laughs> even more weird than it was for me. Um, but I was surprised when I heard this because 
when I talked to them last year when I signed. So I know I've talked forever now, <clears throat> but I need to connect a little bit here. So when I go, let's go back to the offseason, off season, the first one. When I spoke to Fnatic and I had other options in mind, one of the things I asked Fnatic was if Upset is under contract, still in Fnatic basically, is there a wor world where he plays in 2023? Because obviously for me, committing to Fnatic and having Upset on the bench is not really a good situation to be in. With how good he is, it's just not a good situation to be in. I think he is he's one of the people that um, you could put in my place. So I wasn't really comfortable with this situation and I told Fnatic that I need, a, I need assurance that Upset is not playing for them in 2020, 2023 because otherwise it doesn't make sense for me to commit. As I know, he's going to be there. If something goes south, like it did now in winter, I'm, I'm just going to be benched, right? Like it, it doesn't make sense otherwise. So I asked them for assurance that this wasn't happening and they actually gave me assurance. So um, that's why I felt so empty now when I heard this. And maybe empty is the right word. I think now you understand what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's why I felt so empty. Because I did. Okay. I think. All in all. I think. I think looking for that assurance kind of makes sense. I think it's like, obviously, you're going to have the guys that are going to be like, yeah, you're competitive. You you need to be able to be the best AD carry, compete for your position and whatever. But when you are having that conversation in off season, right? You need to kind of look at it through a business perspective. And the fact is, Upset is better than Reckless. It is not about facing no repercussions. And it's really not about facing no repercussions because I can kind of... kind of understand it. I don't think it's that big of a deal to ask for this assurance. Because... If if you are negotiating in the off season and you know that they just have the best AD carry on the bench just breathing down your neck. It is a very, very different situation, very different circumstance. It's just not quite the same. Let me just go for the I didn't really feel sad or angry. I was just like it was an empty feeling. It made me feel like um, um that I heard them talking together. We actually talked about it, like me together with Fnatic talked about it, and then we ended up here anyway. Um, situation I'm very comfortable in because it just feels so bad for all of us. It feels bad for me. I imagine it feels fucking bad for him. I haven't talked to him, but I imagine it feels fucking bad for him. And uh, it doesn't put Fnatic in a good position either, so I really hope we can figure this out and make everyone happy at the same time. Um, I imagine he didn't want to play, so I'm to be in. But... Um, I'm, I'm on the team, I'm playing, and I will do everything I can to make this work, make the best of this. Okay. Alright, I think we can move on. I think we can move on, yeah.